Hello and welcome to my first ever recipe video. This is for a really, really gorgeous beef curry. Um, the recipe for which was given to me about 30 years ago by a friend of a friend. It's um, on a tatty piece of yellow paper that's uh, food stained and held together by sellotape, but um, I still use it. Um, maybe one day I should write it somewhere else. Anyway, because this is my first video, there's some things which I've learned through doing this, but I still wanted to share it with you. So forgive me if along the way there are a few things that I could have done better or film better. Anyway, we'll start off with the recipe and what I'll do is go through the ingredients as I use them during the recipe, but I'll also put the uh, ingredients down below in metric and in imperial so that you can use the, the measurements that you feel most comfortable with. Okay, all right, so off we go, and like every good curry recipe, we start off with the oil. Um, I use sunflower oil, and the reason for that is it's fairly flavourless and it operates well at high temperatures. Into the oil, we need to put some bay leaves. Um, so I've got four bay leaves, five cloves, and four cardamom pods. And so I'll pop those into the oil and just move them around a little. And what this does is just help the oil to get the um, really lovely flavours from these whole spices. Um, so we just move those around a little bit until we need to put the onions in. In terms of onions, I've used one really large onion here. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot of glare on there. So I apologise. And also for my hand, which is way too close to the camera, but I'll learn. Um, so I'm popping the onion in and I'm just going to move that around in the oil and make sure that everything's coated. And it's really worth taking your time with the onions in my opinion. I think um, if you can cook them for quite some time, maybe even um, 10 minutes or so, so that they're golden brown and perhaps tinged a more dark brown around the edge, I think you most definitely reap a benefit from that in terms of flavour certainly with curries or casseroles. So there we are, just um, quickly stepped through um, into um, where the onions are ready and I'm putting the meat in. For me, I used um, a, a joint of brisket, which I cut into big chunks. I find if you buy it from the supermarket in the packets, the chunks are just too small and quite uneven. Um, so I think it really does pay to actually just um, buy a joint and cut them up yourself. Once the beef is at the stage where everything's sealed, we need to start adding some more spices. So what I'm going to be adding next is some minced up garlic and ginger, about an inch and a half of ginger and five big fat cloves of garlic. So I use um, one of those little uh, grated plates. I don't know, um, I think they're Spanish anyway. Um, and so you mince that up quite nicely. But if you haven't got that, you can always blitz it in the food processor. The important thing is that they're in uh, a really kind of pulverized state. Um, move that around with the meat and the onions and make sure everything is coated in, in that. Um, and then what we need to do then is once that's happened is add some more spices. There's quite a few spices in here, but if you're um, a regular cook, they're things that you should have, I'm sure, in your store cupboard. Um, so in terms of the spices that we're going to use, um, I'm going to add those now. So uh, we're going to um, start off by adding um, one teaspoon of coriander one teaspoon of cumin, two teaspoons of paprika, one teaspoon of turmeric, and because I like mine spicy, I've added two teaspoons of hot chili powder, but you can do that to taste. And then in the middle, although you can't see it really well, is the salt, it's just a teaspoon of salt. So add that into the mix, and then just mix it thoroughly so that um, all of the meat is covered with uh, the spices and we just want to fry that off for a little while until everything is covered and uh, the flavours um, at this point are really developing and the smell from this saucepan is just absolutely gorgeous um, and um, just looking at it now makes me want to eat it all over again, it's really tasty. 
The next thing we need to do is add some yogurt. I've used 0% uh, fat yogurt here and again you can't see that properly because of the over bright light. Um, again apologies. Um, we need to add six tablespoons of yogurt to this. Um, some people say that using 0% uh, percent fat yogurt actually makes it split and I, I guess it does in, in some instances. However, in this it doesn't really matter and you definitely don't notice with this recipe so if you're looking to save any any calories then this is a really good and easy way to do that and if you're not then just use any kind of natural yogurt um, even full fat yogurt if you want to so we're adding six tablespoons um, in between each one or each two towards the end um, just um, stir it around and make sure that um, it's it's all combined into the spices and the oil and the onions um, and really it, this is starting now to look a bit more like um, a curry than it was before um, so there I am adding um, the extra little bits of yogurt in and then uh, when I've finished all six of those then we'll add the final spice so just speeding this up a bit so that you don't have to wait through it okay. it's definitely worth taking time over this part of the recipe I think because this is where the flavour levels are really built up um, it's not got much in it this uh, curry and if you wanted to make it low fat you could easily not use the oil just use some oil spray um, but I, uh, in this particular instance, I'm, I'm not, um, I'm, I'm not counting calories for this particular one. So we need to add now the final spice, which is fennel. So I've got two teaspoons of fennel here in this little pot, which I'm popping in, um, just mixing those through. And at this point, um, they do look a bit weird, and it, you, you think, goodness me, you're going to be able to taste those when you're eating the curry. But trust me, um, they they really do add something in terms of flavour and you really can't tell they're there. Then afterwards, once we've uh, added the fennel, stirred it round a bit and the, um, um, the curry sauce is starting to bubble, then we need to add some water. So I'm just adding two small jugs of water here, um, which is about a half a litre altogether. So not a huge amount because as the curry is cooking and this curry really does uh, benefit from long and slow cooking you'll be adding more if you need to and if you add too much then we just take this saucepan lid off and we bubble it away so no problem no biggie either way so there we go there's the first um, little jug of water and then I'll add the second little jug of water just so that all the meat is covered in the first instance um, it, and again it doesn't look very uh, good at this point it looks all a bit um, watery um, but trust me as it's cooking down it's going to start to look more and more like a, a proper curry and have a thick and unctuous brown sauce attached to it um, we need to just bring that to the boil um, and let it boil and then uh, when you st first start noticing it just give it another stir and then if it continues to boil then you know it's coming up to the right kind of temperature and then uh, once um, it, it is boiling and it's simmering away nicely then we just pop the lid on and leave it to cook through. We go back to it on um, as many occasions as you like. Um, I like to check on it maybe every 10-15 minutes um, if I'm in the kitchen anyway um, but it's um, on a medium heat so it should be okay but as you go through the cooking process just make sure that um, you, you're keeping the water topped up. You don't really want that much sauce in and then uh, towards the end obviously this is the final sauce you can see that the sauce is really beautifully um, nutty brown um, it's a really thick sauce there's not a huge amount of it but it's really coating the meat and the meat is tender and you can cook this for as long and slow as you want to and it's also great the next day so here it is all served up so I've served it here with some rice and some poppadoms and some homemade salsa and also some homemade 
um, yogurt and mint sauce and the salsa is basically any kind of salad vegetables I've got with a chili chopped up in there and also with either lime or lemon juice so it's also a really delicious and low fat option. So there you go, thank you so much for watching my first video, I really hope that you enjoy it and I hope that you try it and if you do try it please um, mention uh, down below and let me know how you get on um, and also if you like this video and you think you might want to watch some of my other videos which will be recipes and food hauls and anything food related really and maybe some other stuff eventually but uh, please um, if you feel you want to hit uh, subscribe um, and um, then I'll look forward to hopefully seeing you on my channel again soon and uh, if you did like this video if you could give it a, a thumbs up that would be really great I really hope to see you again soon and thank you so much for watching bye bye